Today I'm going to do a book review of a book called On Photography by Susan Sontag. Usually I avoid books about art criticism and this is photography criticism. However, this book had been recommended by so many people that I thought I would take a look at it and read it. This is a, a collection of essays that were written for the New York Review of Books. So they put them all together, made a book, and it does make a very nice book. Each essay is slightly different and covers a lot of material about photography. And as far as background photography, you know, I have, I take, certainly take photographs and I've worked in a dark room and created prints. And uh, in college, I took a photography course. I have a shelf in my library of photography books. So I'm really familiar with most of the basics of photography. I've had a couple of photographs published in some small publications. This book is not just for beginners. It is for people who have a background in photography. She references at least 20 different photographers in this book. So I knew about 10 of them. So I kind of, when she was referencing them, I knew them in my head. It's easy to look them up on the internet. It's difficult when you're reading and then you have to stop and look something up and then go back to the book. Looking up references is an inconvenience that I try to avoid. So that's why I think that you need to have some background on photography before you read this book. You know, there are many times I've thought about photography and there are many times when I was reading this book and I read things and I thought, wow, I thought that myself. And yet here she is, she, she, she thought that, she wrote it down and it's published. And so, you know, good for her for getting those ideas. Uh, but it, it validated a lot of thoughts that I had about photography because I had these same thoughts. Be because I like painting so much that a lot of the thoughts I had were the differences between painting and photography. There was a, you know, when photography first came out, there's a whole story of how it challenged painters because it was making an image and painters made image and they were competing for the same space. So she makes a, she, she really follows that argument and makes distinctions between painting and photography. One of the things she does is she finds a lot of the deficiencies of photography. I'm not sure how much people think about that today because in a lot of ways, photography is one, it's just so prevalent. Uh, as far as in publications, there used to be a lot of il more illustrations in publications. Photography is just so universal. I mean, um, and she talks about the deficiencies of photography very, very well. She really strips away all the basics of what is going on in a photograph. And sometimes her criticisms are just on the edge of hypercriticism, which would really be a negative for me. But she's judicious in her criticisms but her criticisms are very tough on photography. The, the one reason why I don't like reading about, reading art criticism is because the voice of the author is so strong and authoritative, I found myself just agreeing with them. I'd rather look at art and have my own opinions rather than carry on something that I acquired from a critic. So I do think that's really important is to have your own criticisms when you approach art. You know, at worst, art criticism can kind of leave you feeling kind of smug and looking down on that art. But to me, great art criticism also includes admiration for the art. And she kind of leaves that out a little bit. She's very critical. She's very tough on art, on photography. And she leaves out admiration for photography. One of the things that I like about the way she writes is she writes a little of a bit of, about her thought and then she sums it up in an aphorism. And I really like that kind of writing where the author puts himself out there, says something declarative. She does that and it carries the book. There's very, many instances of this through the whole book. And I really, to me, that's, that's excellent writing. So I'm going to go through some of the things she writes. Um, she makes a point of saying how um, when you go to a, look at a photography ex exhibition, you know, there you, you might see a professional photo photograph next to an amateur photograph. And that's one of the great things about photography is that an amateur can take a great photograph. But one of the things she says is about how, 
when when we're tourists and we go to different countries and take photographs, it's almost like this just automatic thing that people do. She she kind of puts it to a, the Protestant. She connects it to the Protestant work ethic, where we oh like we're usually at work, but then we go traveling on vacation and we feel like we've got to be working. We've got to be making some product. You know, we can't we can't just enjoy the vacation and looking at things. We've got to take a photograph because then at the end of the day, we can look at our camera and say, we took all these photographs, we accomplished something. Uh, that was great. There's another artist named Diane Arbus and she comes down hard on her for taking photographs of all these miserable people. I really like that. Here's something about the Arbus photography. The subjects of Arbus photographs are all members of the same family, inhabitants of a single village. Only as it happens, the idiot village is America. Instead of showing identity between things which are different, like Walt Whitman's Democratic Vista, everybody is shown to look the same. I think she brings that out that when you look at different photo photographers, all the people in their photographs look the same. Like they're all in the same family. You know, no, whether it's um, Diane Arbus or... Um, you know, Man Ray or um, or Richard Avedon. They are, the people all have a similarity to them, and that has to do with the uh, photo photographer style. I have looked at photography books, and a lot of times you look at it, and then like you see these photographs, and I just, they just make me like ugh, I don't like that at all. And they're put with some ones that I really like, and so I kind of think they're at equal value because they're in the book. I wish people would talk more about what they like and what they don't like. I feel like there's this idea in art where you're not allowed to say you, you dislike things. You're supposed to just like everything. And I think that people should say what they don't like and why they don't like it. Sontag is superior to that. Oh, for example, a lot of photography books have these photographers and they take pic photographs of these really boring things. You know, just corners of a room, and you know, they're just not interesting. And then she kind of, she discusses that in a really great way. One of the things she says is that the Chinese have a theory that you pass through boredom into fascination. So like you look at these boring photographs and somehow you become fascinated in it. But I really like this discussion of these boring photo photographs and that's somehow fascinating. Oh, this was such a great thing that she said. She said that photographs look really great when they're old. The, photo the pho photographer is willy-nilly engaged in the enterprise of antiquing reality so that any, sing any photograph from 50 years ago, 75 years ago, kind of has some um, magic to it because it's a historical document. And I've gone through periods when I first started getting into um, reading where, you know, I would look at um, old photographs and just been fascinated by them, fascinated by old magazines. For a great photograph, you've got to, you know, look a little harder, but there, there's just some magic to the, the, what photographs do automatically without any kind of artistic, without any artistic application. To return to that thought about how an amateur can look just as good as a professional. One of the things that immediately came to my mind was just like, that's just like YouTube. You know, YouTube is filled with a lot of professional material, but there's also all these amateurs in there. And you know, I find myself looking at YouTube for hours and I'm looking at amateur work. It's all amateur work and they're competing with professionals. The, the, the technical work of the pro amateurs is less than the professionals, but as far as, interest and entertaining the amateurs really hold their own against all the professionals. The professionals have their deficiencies that you can see, you know, like they're just, they're just too professional. They're just too slick. They just pound down their pros. So it's boring. Whereas amateurs, you start to like their eccentricities and get used to their little styles. I like that point that she brought that out. And you know, all art is going to eventually be photographed, whether it's um, a photograph, whether it's a painting, a drama, a musical on Broadway, 
music concert, everything notable is going to be photographed and a lot of things that aren't notable are going to be photographed. Every street, you know, every hiking trail, every uh, ocean, you know, it's all going to be photographed. It's just, I think that any thinking person who thinks about the human condition should spend some time thinking about photography because it's so prevalent and it has a lot to do with how we see the world. So this is a, this is a great authoritative book on photography and it's definitely, I definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching.